Obnoxious, rude, vile, this home cook has been graced with a lot of adjectives, and most of them give her a pretty bad name. And maybe it's well deserved, because Chrissy Biasiello stands out as the first contestant in MasterChef history to threaten physical violence. I have more enemies than friends, because I never cut my mail shut. And this was far from a one-time occurrence. If I had to describe her, I'd say she was hypocritical, bullying, and, well, just kind of a Karen. But you might be wondering if she was playing a heel for the cameras, or if the producers did her dirty. But no, she's horrible in real life, too. Too. In 2013, she dropped the N-word in one of her tweets. But that's not all. She also made a distasteful joke in another. Thankfully, her account was deleted after that string of obscene tweets were reported serves her right. But IRL shenanigans aside, there was never a moment when she wasn't aggressive on the show. And I couldn't help but wonder how she treated her son in real life. That little dude was a delight. How good a cook mum is on a scale of 1 to 10. 11. Wow. And this viewer shared the same concerns. Imagine watching your mom making a fool of herself on national TV. I can only hope he was spared that particular brand of torture. Now, Chrissy was up to no good good right from the first mystery box challenge. I think some people yeah. like you, some people hate you. Howard, Natasha, they hate me. Um, I think the word is dislike. Right from the get-go, she wasn't exactly everyone's cup of tea and struggled to handle, well, anything gracefully. Maybe I'll go up to her and say, look, I know we have our differences, but good job. But I probably won't. Unsurprisingly, she didn't seem to strike up any friendships throughout the competition. Maybe she wasn't even capable of it? And if you agree, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. But let's now get back to the challenge. The cooks had just four basic ingredients on hand. Chocolate bacon, a tomato, and a potato. Chrissy was the last to present her creation. A bacon and potato frittata paired with a tomato and basil salad. The judges had some pretty good things to say about her dish, but she still lost to Natasha. Let her have her moment, because I don't think it's going to last very long. So she had to compete in the elimination round. Keep score here. This will become a recurring theme. Anyway, she whipped up langoustine mac and cheese. I make lobster mac and cheese all the time. Now, no shade intended, but didn't she also say this? I am a single mom on a budget. I'm in a one-bedroom apartment. I sleep on the couch. I wonder how she was able to afford making it all the time, because lobster ain't cheap. Anyway, while cooking, she caught Howard doubting how well her mixing cheese and shellfish was going to go. Mac and cheese and, uh, and the shellfish would go well together at all. But strawberry, definitely go with it. Now, although the judges liked her dish, it didn't win. Jordan's and Jesse's creations were just that much better. In the next team challenge, when Jordan picked Chrissy for his blue team, he made it clear he'd take the lead and expected her to follow suit. Everybody thinks I'm kind of like going to take over. Let's go, you son of a bitch. But things got chaotic and the blue team ended up losing the challenge. I'd like to chop somebody's head off for going into this pressure test. <laughs> Again, keep score here. Another recurring theme. When they returned after the loss, Jordan decided to save Howard and James first before securing his own spot. That's when Chrissy got a bit heady about Jordan's choices. That was a bitch move. In my neighborhood, that'd get your ass kicked. The captain goes down with the ship. But well, that was just the beginning of her antics. Because cut to the firefighter challenge, and once again, Chrissy was back to, well, being herself. Beth is like one of those hipster people that I can't stand. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Then what did she mean by this? Because she hates me. She hates you. Oh, absolutely. Why would she hate you? I have no idea. Okay, so only she can hate people for no reason, right? I mean, the entitlement is making my head spin. But the real question is why anyone would want her on her team in the first place. Because she's the only contestant in the show's history to lose every single team challenge in their season. Which is really something we can only see in hindsight, but her fellow contestants had to get the feeling she was an albatross at some point, right? And, well, the only time she won a team challenge was the wedding one, when her team decided for her not to cook. So maybe they did. Speaking of Chrissy and her tantrums, it would be a mistake if I didn't bring up the Glee cast and crew team challenge. Now, this is when Jesse and Chrissy took charge as team captains. You can imagine how things went for Chrissy, I imagine. When they inevitably lost, she pointed the finger at Beamy, 
citing his mishandling of the chicken as the reason for their loss. I mean, of course, when should the captain ever go down with the ship, right? And, well, when she had the chance to save herself, she did. They already don't like me, so I really don't care what they think. My kid would want me to go up them stairs, and that's what I'm doing. Like, what a hypocrite, right? And look at what she did. She practically hid behind her kids as an excuse for not taking responsibility. What's more, she used her advantage to nominate Beanie for the pressure test, which resulted in him making the mother of all mistakes, serving a liquid pie. As Beanie faced elimination and ultimately left the competition, Chrissy just kept laughing and laughing. I'm very happy with the results. Mission accomplished. At least Beanie was a good person. Not good for drama, but you get my point. Okay, on to the next mystery box challenge. <laughs> I was honestly surprised when they threw Pig's Head into the mix. In season two's pork challenge, the intimidating cuts were excluded because the producers believed the mainstream American audience might not be into seeing awful on TV. They decided to test the waters in the previous season with a mystery box featuring organ meats, even including testicles. And apparently, the audience didn't pitch a fit. So in season four, they decided to bring out the Pig's Heads. Anyway, Chrissy didn't impress and had to compete in the elimination round. You playing it safe or you could be in danger? You, know, I just, you want to be a smart ass? I can be a smart ass too. Just two utterly disgusting personalities. No matter what side you pick, you lose. Chrissy came out the other end of the round with bacon cheddar mashed potatoes, asparagus, and cornmeal crusted fried catfish. However, Ramsey wasn't a fan of her decision to leave the skin on the catfish. I just never had it any other way. Are you cooking for the judges tonight to stay in this competition or are you cooking for yourself again? And the then came Joe, berating her through and through, saying it tasted muddy. To add a dramatic flair, he asked her to shut up, like he was disciplining a third grader. You think you know it all? Then go cook it all yourself at home. Just listen to me a second. <sighs> add that to one of the fleetingly rare moments, I actually agreed with Joe. However, Chrissy clapped back with a response that was no better than an uh-uh. However, given Joe's penchant for drama, it was hard to take his reaction seriously. That's all taste money. If you want to talk behind my back, have the balls to say it up here in front of me. Moving on. Her dish wasn't chosen in the Mexican Mystery Box Challenge, so she had to fight for her life. Again, this time the elimination test was basically a Walmart ad. Something worth mentioning here is that Ramsey back then didn't endorse Walmart. He didn't even utter a word and left it to the other judges. Walmart sells the highest quality choice steaks. They're certified by the USDA for quality. Yeah, this blatant ad was kind of gross. And who knew that Ramsey would eventually team up with them to sell his really awful frozen food line, huh? Now coming back to the challenge, there were two baskets. One had strawberries, banana, eggs, milk, baking powder, butter, sugar, strawberry gelatin, and a lemon. The other contained a sweet potato, cauliflower, tomato, mini bell peppers, collard greens, pistachios, cilantro, limes, and undisclosed additional ingredients, all valued at $25. The pricier basket only had a single steak in it, with a shorter time limit of 30 minutes in comparison to the other's hour. Brie, now automatically in the top 10, designated the one-hour baking basket for the entire group. Except for Natasha, a skilled baker who received the 30-minute steak basket. Devious. Anyway, during the cook, Chrissy ran into a problem with her strawberry muffins. When I added the gelatin for a little bit of strawberry flavor, it may have messed with the science. Now, this is where I'm with the people that say the editors will sometimes intentionally screw you over. Listen to this. Chrissy's not my target, but if Chrissy goes home, that's cool. So, here's the deal. It's so blatantly a mashup of four separate sound bites. I legitimately think they stitched them together to portray Brie as catty. Anyway, what are your thoughts about this? I work with enough audio for the channel that I can tell the sound bites apart. Meanwhile, Chrissy stepped up with her strawberry gelatin cupcakes, owning up to the unorthodox edition right away, confessing that they were disgusting. Ramsey was disappointed, as they all anticipated her excelling in this challenge. The scene then shifted to Natasha, who couldn't help but grin from ear to ear after hearing what they had to say. This is your worst performance in MasterChef. 
but she somehow got out of there unscathed since she made it to the top 10. This time around, after a really interesting way of having the judges enter, 101 surfers arrived to catch some waves. The challenge was to prepare enough fish tacos to feed the entire beachgoer crowd within an hour. The twist was they were limited to choosing only one type of fish, ahi tuna, cod, catfish, or mahi-mahi. Man, no brainer for me. I'd have gone for ahi tuna. Delicious, and it doesn't need to be cooked to death to be perfect. Anyway, there was another twist. Jesse had the privilege of being the sole contestant chosen as a team captain, and she subsequently stacked her team with James, Eddie, Bethy, and Natasha, leaving the other five on a team of their own. She even got to decide the team captain for the remaining group, Savannah. Now, Savannah opted for cod and experimented with battered, fried, and blackened preparation methods. And Chrissy took charge of the battering and frying. I fry this cod and it's gorgeous. It was crispy, it was beautiful. However, her team didn't think so. They were unimpressed with how awful she made the cod taste, so they pivoted to a grilled approach. Unsure of how she could help, Savannah put her on the task of, well, charring the tortillas. So, I'm just grilling tortillas. <sighs> and yeah, they lost. When it came time to name the weakest member of the team, pretty much everyone put Chrissy on blast the first chance they got. Subsequently, the team retreated to the wine cellar to strategize on who to rescue from the elimination round. But things got real tense between Bree and Chrissy, with Chrissy threatening physical assault. Shut the up, really? What are you gonna do? Do it, I That's hope you, you can't sit here. Yeah, I wasn't kidding at the top of the video. But eventually, the team saved Jordan from the pressure test, leaving Luca, Chrissy, Bree, and Savannah fending for themselves, and also tasked with preparing chicken breast three ways, sauteed, fried, and stuffed. And they had 40 minutes to do it. Definitely a really tall order, but Chrissy was super confident. Luca's never made fried chicken. Savannah's never made fried chicken. However, right in the middle of the challenge, Luca confided in Ramsey, expressing how everyone was on the same page. They were tired of Chrissy, and she needed to go. And when Ramsey took a look around the room, pretty much everyone was nodding along with what Luca was saying. But Chrissy laughed it off. Public enemy number one. Ah, <sighs> what an honor it must have been. But she wasn't done. She is the epitome of the girls that I used to beat up in high school. I hate her. Her behavior was really hard to swallow at the best of times. Even more so here. Confessing to being a bully and openly threatening to hurt fellow competitors is unacceptable. No matter what. Even on a reality TV show. Like, if someone is going off the deep end pretty much every day, maybe you kick them off the show for everyone's sake? Now, in 2022, she posted this picture on Instagram saying that she hated the show, and especially the producers. The last time they asked me to come for a 10-year reunion, I basically told them to go F themselves. In those words, but much worse. Good luck to anyone that is competing. I hope production changed their abusive and emotionally torturing practices. I won't be watching. Love, Chrissy. Season 4 supervillain. Was Chrissy an asshole? Absolutely. But a supervillain? Giving yourself a little too much credit there, Chrissy. Now, the producers may edit things here and there, but I don't think they can give you an entirely new personality. And let's not forget those tweets I showed off at the top of the video. Well, maybe she's right. They knew better. Back to the season. In the next mystery box challenge, Eddie emerged victorious, securing his safety from elimination. As the winner, he gained the authority to choose an ingredient for his competitors, ham, mushrooms, or shrimp. And Eddie picked mushrooms, a smart choice considering mushrooms are rarely the star of the show in a dish. Half of the contestants received fresh, delightful wild mushrooms, while the others were stuck with some nasty canned stuff. And yeah, Chrissy was one of the unlucky few to be handed a can. Still, Chrissy concocted a canned mushroom cassoulet infused with eggplant and pancetta. And despite several participants also using pancetta in their dishes, Joe surprisingly found Chrissy's execution impressive. What the product you had to work with, this is a pretty impressive effort. You know what? She's really reminding me of Russell from Hell's Kitchen here. Terrible bully, aggressive, but has a lot of potential. Somehow. Uh, I made this seasoning for the rice. Yeah. 
Uh, the rice is cooked perfectly. Anyway, maybe that's just me. But when Brie made grilled sage wild mushrooms with beet and goat cheese salad, her dish was compared to a peaceful walk in the forest, which Chrissy seemed to take offense at. Friendly vegan hippie thing you got going on, because it's really pissing me off. Just cook and shut up. Brie wasn't force feeding her vegetarianism to Chrissy, so why did she get so riled up? Like, I get the stereotype of pushy vegans, but that wasn't even happening here. Just Chrissy being Chrissy, I guess. Well, in the next challenge, the contestants faced an overnight camping session to brainstorm their menu with minimal equipment. A camping knife, a flint for starting a fire, a cast iron skillet, and a wooden spoon. Walk or hike, that's like torture. The teams were initially divided with one group working on three rabbits as their protein and the other tasked with six pigeons. Natasha made the choice to team up with Chrissy, a really terrible move that surprisingly didn't backfire on her because the judges decided to surprise the contestants by swapping the teams. Natasha really dodged a bullet there, huh? This twist might have been triggered by Chrissy's blunt declaration, expressing her dislike for Brie and her reluctance to have a vegetarian as a team captain. I don't like the idea of having a vegetarian captain my team. In a later interview, Brie had a lot to say about it. Also, here's another fun tidbit. The contestants didn't receive dinner or breakfast, forcing them to work with ingredients not intended for their dishes. Brie managed to make oatmeal for herself under these constraints. When Ramsey stopped by to assess their progress, he sampled Brie's creation and was so impressed that he devoured nearly half of it. God, I'd love more behind the scenes content getting dropped officially. But moving on, let's skip to episode 18. The producers decided to throw in another surprise comeback. But this one's really out there. Each judge had the chance to bring back one of the previously eliminated contestants. Ramsey went for Brie, Joe picked Lynn, and Graham decided on Beanie. Of all people, Brie, seriously? Ugh. Well, seriousness, I found it odd. Imagine being someone like Eddie. All three of these comeback contestants were sent home before him, and yet he didn't even get a shot? Like, what the hell? Anyway, to Chrissy's annoyance, Brie won the challenge. Then, after 20 episodes, the contestants got a taste of a real restaurant kitchen, as they took charge at WP24, one of Wolfgang Puck's real fancy restaurants. Natasha and Brie stepped up as team captains, with Chrissy finding herself on Brie's team once again. Chrissy has a record of zero wins in team challenges. Cooks had to master the restaurant's top four dishes for a group of 22 guests. A real tall order. The menu featured steamed scallop shumai, lobster lettuce cups, Singapore-style chili prawns, and stir-fried wagyu beef, all cooked using a wok. James was a bit concerned about his team's dynamics. He noticed Brie moving slowly and, given her vegetarianism, worried about her being able to cook meat properly. On top of that, Chrissy's lack of familiarity with Asian cooking didn't really help. And I hate Asian food. When they got their hands on the main courses, the blue team encountered significant issues. Chrissy couldn't really grasp how to use a wok properly, resulting in their dishes going out cold. Chrissy! If yes. the steam is not steam, it's slow down on the salad. On the flip side, the red team is doing much better, but... I can't remember what the plate's supposed to look like. Ramsey, getting war flashbacks from some of his worst Hell's Kitchen services, blew up in a way that made me double check what show I was watching. And the shrimp are raw. Who's cooking the shrimp? Chrissy. In the aftermath of the red team's victory, Bree, James, and Chrissy found themselves in yet another pressure test. Honestly, name a pressure test Chrissy wasn't in. With a 45-minute window to make fried calamari from scratch, they started with six whole slices of squid, needing to prep them delicately without piercing the ink sack. The challenge was not only to prep the squid properly, but also maintain a consistent oil temperature. While James had some experience cleaning squid, Chrissy struggled. Shocker, I know. Which got messy real quick. So how do you think that's going to keep you in the competition? I didn't put lemon juice in my marinara. Hey, she survived, as she always seems to only to be at her very worst the next day. 
During Luca's Team Choice Challenge, Chrissy was partnered with Jesse, aiming to craft a three-course meal using the season's most extensive mystery box yet. Right from the start, Chrissy and Jesse struggled to find common ground. Like, when Chrissy confessed how uncomfortable she was working with the crepes, Jesse retorted with a reminder about how Chrissy abandoned the lobster earlier. Jesse, it's just sticking. And she snapped got real violent too. I'm going to take this hot pan and smash it in her face. Chrissy sought refuge in the equipment room to compose herself, leaving Jesse to manage the remaining tasks solo. I have got to get out of this kitchen right now. If it wasn't painfully obvious, their three-course meal paled in comparison to what Luca and Natasha plated. Thus, landing them in the pressure test. Why do you always let the members in your team take over? Fair question. Anyway, they were working with chocolate. But finally, finally, Chrissy's efforts fell short compared to Jessie's chocolate lava cake, leading to her elimination from the competition. <sighs> Jeez, about time. But let me get to what you're really here for. After her appearance on MasterChef, Chrissy started offering private chef and catering services and regularly posted recipes on her blog, Rotun Chef. By the way, she's also a breast cancer survivor. Pretty recently, she posted on Instagram saying that she would be taking a break from private chef and catering duties indefinitely to give her body some much-deserved rest. So I'm kind of conflicted. On one hand, Chrissy was a real piece of work before and during her tenure on the show, but now she seems like she's mellowed out a bunch. Well, I guess it goes to show just how much people are capable of growing. Even bullies, well, former bullies, I guess, like Chrissy. So maybe we show people like her a little more compassion, huh? Who knows how much they're capable of growing? Anyway, what are your thoughts on Chrissy's uh, colorful journey on MasterChef? Get in the comments and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out this next one right here.